Hey everybody, Matt Williams, Matt Williams Golf. And I thought what I'd do today is I'd give you a tour of my home course, Creekside Golf Club, which is in Oregon here in the United States. Now, um, the reason I thought I'd do this, I've actually already gotten a couple questions on YouTube. And so I thought I'd go ahead and give you a tour of the course where most of my content will be coming from and where we'll be playing a lot of the different things that I do when I'm featuring matches and testing out clubs and showing you things that I'm working on with my game or whatever. Um, don't worry, I'll still have a lot of content for you that comes from other courses as well. But since a majority, most likely, of my content is going to come from my home course, I thought I'd just go ahead and give you guys a tour of every hole on the golf course. Yeah. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and give you a tour of all the holes on the golf course. And we're going to go ahead and start with hole number one. Now hole number one, this is actually a really easy and manageable starting hole. It's a 500 plus yard par five. The bunkers on the left sort of come into play, depends how well you hit your drive. Most guys uh, hitting specifically from the blues will try and be forward to where you just saw that cart there, which will leave you anywhere from 200 to 250 yards in. Pretty narrow opening. That bunker usually doesn't come into play, but the trees on both the right and the left do come into play. Um, you really don't want to be right or left on the approach of this. This green generally slopes from right to left. And yeah, it's a real manageable starting hole. So it's not a bad hole to start off on. Hole number two is only about a 340 yard par four. It's a really short hole. So you can't hit driver because it's a hard dog leg left. So what most players try and do from the blue tees is they try and hit something anywhere from 230 to 245 to try and get that corner. Now that corner slopes hard left, so if you hit that corner well, you can roll towards the green and funnel towards the green. Then you need to make a really nice approach shot. Probably want to play it short, not short of the green, but you can see there's a creek behind the green. You absolutely do not want to be long. And uh, yeah, next one is a par three, about 130 yards. Uh, bunkers guarding the front. Uh, really not much room to miss right or deep, even though it kind of looks like there is. And you definitely don't ever want to be left because there's a creek over there to the left, which runs around to the back. So uh, really need to, it's kind of green or bust on this little par three. Everything slopes to the middle. It's kind of a bowl shaped green uh, where everything slopes to the middle. Next hole is par four, excuse me, par five. It's only about 480 yards. Most guys on their tee shot are going to try and cut their corner. If they can, if they're a pretty big hitter, if they can carry 275, maybe 280 to over 300 yards, then they definitely are going to take a really aggressive tiger line at that corner on the right. If they hit it straight, though, the danger is you could find one of those bunkers on the left. Now, if you watch some of my videos until next spring, this hole is under construction because they rebuilt the whole green. If you've hit a good drive, you have less than 200 yards in, maybe even only 170 yards in. Uh, there's a, now a bunker in front of that green, but you can still see you got a lot of trouble with that creek to the right. Uh, if you're going to miss on your approach, you want to miss left, and that's that. This is our signature hole, number five. Uh, usually about a 400 plus, I think it's 410 yard par four. Uh, those bunkers that you see on both the right and the left have been removed now. But it's still, you still got to play a really great tee shot to a really narrow landing. A lot of guys might miss right, and then that tree on the right, right on the edge of the fairway comes into play. Got to carry the green, cannot be short. You've got a creek in the front, and that green slopes down to the creek. So short is bad, uh, right is bad, left is bad. You just got to make a really good shot, which is why it's the number one rated handicap hole on our entire golf course. You really got to make a couple of really great golf shots to get in there and have a chance for birdie or par. Hole number six now is a par three. Um, bunkers guard the left and water is way over there on the right. This entire green slopes from left to right downhill pretty severely actually. Um, pretty large green. Again, you really want to make a great shot. You can miss long. Uh, there's a small area to the right of those bunkers to miss short, but uh, really you got to get on the green and make a good shot. Now, number seven here to me, it, for a righty, is one of the hardest tee shots 
on the golf course. If you're a lefty, you can play a big power fade, but if you're a righty that fades it, uh, you are in trouble because if you crush a good one, you'll go over those golfers and into the trees there on the right. The landing area is just a little further than where these guys are at. You really want to get past where they're at. Put yourself at about 150 yards in. Uh, a lot of room to miss left on this. Bunker over to the right, creek over to the right. Um, and this green slopes basically left to right. And uh, yeah, there's a little some sneaky breaks on this green here, but a good golf hole. Now, moving on to hole number eight, this is actually a really challenging hole. It's only about 400 to 410 yards, depending on where the tees are at. But this entire hole is uphill, severely, somewhat severely uphill. Um, and you're often hitting into the wind. No bunkers, as you can see, but trees on the right, trees on the left. You really need to pound something down the fairway. And you probably need to club up on that approach shot. Bunkers, a real narrow opening to the green if you're going to be short. Bunkers right, bunkers left. And you can see with the cart path on the left, the trees back behind, there's really not a lot of room to miss this green. It's a pretty challenging hole, number eight here. Everything on that green slopes from right to left. Um, some Probably that's one of the more uh, kind of greens with a little bit more break to it as we look back down the fairway. Now moving on to hole number nine, this is a fun golf hole. Uh, again, you just wanna just rip one here because it, it really, you can't really tell from these flyover views how much undulation is on this golf course, but if you get to about this point right now, it goes massively downhill. So if you're the type of person that normally hits 270, you can, you know, reach 300. The big bombers have to be careful of the pond on the right, which, by the way, is blind to everybody from the tee shot because of how far it goes downhill. Bunkers on the left. Deep is no good because of the water. Water on the right. You can hit this one short and sometimes get it to run up on or bounce on. Uh, but again, a fun, fun hole, fun tee shot, and uh, you got to make a good approach. Now, number 10 Real challenging hole. Uh, again, it's 400 or so yards, but some most guys don't elect to hit driver. And uh, if you go with a three wood or a five wood and go about 240, you land about right here. Because if you hit driver, you can hit those bunkers on the right, or you can go all the way through into the crap. Everything on this fairway funnels down to the left, and then you've got an elevated approach shot. Bunker behind the green, bunker left of the green, creek short. And again, that's all uphill, so if you land short of the green, it's certainly not going to reach the green. It might even roll back just a hair. Um, not a real deep green, but very, very wide. And that T, or excuse me, that pin can be placed all over the place, so uh, it really can give you some different looks. Hole number 11 is only about 130, 135 yards, but it's severely uphill, so plan on an extra club here. It's almost kind of a false front. You can't see the bottom of the flag. You can't see the surface of the putting green. That bunker on the right catches a lot of balls, though. Again, not a deep green, so you really got to play it to the number on that one. This is hole number five, 510 to 515 yard par five. This is an awesome, awesome golf hole. Again, massive climb up here of many, many feet. Uh, most people hit their drive in between these cluster of bunkers right here. These bunkers come into play no matter what tee you're playing from. Then you have a decision to make. If you go for the green, again, there's going to be a false front on this. If you go for the green and you end up being short or trying to run it up there, you're probably going to put it in this fairway bunker right here. Uh, or you could play short, lay up, and then hit a nice 100-yard approach shot in. But if you try and get up here, you've got to make a really great shot. Everything on this green slopes from right to left, quite quite severely so. So, uh, yeah. All right, this next one is a 550-yard par 5. The idea is to get it up on the top half on the left. And as we're flying up here, we call, Oh, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Who is that? Look at that handsome guy in that white shirt. That's me. That's me walking when they did this. Anyways, the idea, folks, is to be up on the left. If you're down where that cart is, you can actually shorten up the hole, uh, but you'll obviously be playing from some hard pan rough there. Uh, 550 yards, it, you know, not a lot of guys reach this in two, certainly not the average guys. 
Um, so, you know, this is a tough eagle hole, and uh, but yeah, it's a pretty pretty fun golf hole. Birdie is really manageable here if you make a good shot on. Again, not a deep green, but very, very wide. Most everything kind of goes from right to left on this. Uh, moving on to 14, this is a, about a 200 yard par three, uh, but it plays less than 200 because again, you can't tell on these f uh, drone flyovers, but this is all downhill. So take a good 10 yards off of that. Left is absolutely no good. There's obviously room to miss short or right. Uh, this case, it's not a very wide green, but it's exceptionally deep. And there's quite a bit of a uh, change in elevation from the front of the green to the back of the green. It goes uphill. But then about where that flag is, it actually goes back downhill on the back. So you got to be careful when you got one of those back pin placements on this par three. Pretty relatively challenging hole. Uh, that hole kind of can give some guys some fit sometimes. This is a really hard golf hole. Hole number 15, par four. Uh, don't remember the yardage on this. Uh, I apologize. None of these uh, bunkers that you see short really come into play, but the bunker right and the bunkers left, no matter whether you're hitting from the black tips, the blue tees, or the whites, they all come into play. So you've got a pretty narrow opening that you're shooting for there. But what really makes this a hard golf hole is this approach shot. Look at this. Look at how narrow that opening is in front of the green. Bunker right, bunker left, street to the left, and then look at all of that creek on the right and it wraps around behind the green. If you do not hit the green, par is gonna be a very tough score to make on this hole. You've gotta make a great drive and you've gotta make a really great second shot to have a chance at birdie or par on this hole. Number 16 here is a par five and it's, it's, it's short, uh, but it's all uphill. Uh, you've got a blind tee shot. If you're a righty that likes to cut the ball, then this tee shot is suited for you. If you hit a draw or if you're a lefty that hits a fade, then you can see on all those trees, um, that's a you know wetlands area. You can't go and play your ball out of there, so that's trouble. You're usually going to be short of this cart path with your tee shot, which will give you anywhere from a 200 to 240 yard approach shot. Again, that's all uphill though. Um, and there's a ridge right in the center of this green that oftentimes will either shoot your ball straight back or it'll bounce it left or bounce it right. Um, but this is a hole that a lot of good golfers really hope to make birdie on and uh, try and get a stroke back on. Um, still a challenging hole, but it's, it's, it's gettable for sure. It's definitely gettable. I even had an eagle on this hole once. Um, but it's a good golf hole as we look back down the fairway again. Now you're looking downhill because, again, as I said, that approach shot is all uphill climb. So it plays a little longer than it really is. Hole number 17. This, this stretch from 15, 16, 17, 18, this is hard. 200 yards usually, sometimes 195, uh, 192, depending on tee and pin placement. As you can see, short is awful. Room to miss right, room to miss left. No room at all to miss uh, behind the green and absolutely no room to miss short of this. The wind is often blowing into you. You can see that flag is fluttering all over the place. And uh, pretty large green. Uh, but yeah, a lot of guys come up short on this. They don't take enough club. They get into that crap there and then they have to drop from the drop area and take a penalty. So uh, yeah, hole number 18, probably the hardest hole on the golf course, even though it's rated uh, the handicap is number two on this. Because it's a really long par four, it's uphill, um, it's certainly the last half of it is uphill. Uh, most guys, including me, cannot hit driver here because you can see a creek that cuts across this fairway diagonally. And oftentimes if you hit driver, you can find that creek. So you have to lay up with a three wood, some guys even less than a three wood, but it still leaves you anywhere from 175 to 200 in, all uphill, bunker right, bunk well, bunkers surrounding this whole entire hole, and a uh, very large green, quite a bit of undulation, usually slopes from right to left and moves from right to left. Um, sometimes you can't even see the green surface from your approach shot, so yeah, that's my hole. There it is, guys, that's Creekside. Those are the holes that I'll be playing for a majority of my videos. 
Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, smash like to this, and uh, now you'll have an idea of what the layout is that I'm playing for a majority of my content. Appreciate having you guys with me. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you later.